Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, Joe, this is the third video we're recording right now. This is, yes. Yeah. Now, for you listening at home, this is, uh, you're just, you know, you just started the video and you're confused by this uh, breaking the fourth wall of video creation, but, uh, you know, Joe, when, when we're moving from one video to another, we should, uh, there should be like some waiting music or something that goes on other than me just awkwardly being quiet and kind of twirling my fingers while we wait for a few seconds so I can remember to edit it properly. Yeah, no, that would be nice if we could think up something like that or, or, or a short clip to maybe yeah, on. That would be good. We should we should work yeah. on that. Well, listen, um, for those of you who have been following this channel for a while, several months ago, uh, at least six months ago, I think, we talked about the return of Saga. Yeah. And uh, Saga had been gone for, what, three years? More. Over three years. Yeah. Over three years. It had been gone. And it was coming back, and, and there was some speculate. You were speculating that the series was not going to launch as strong as when it left, and that the time away would hurt it. I did. And it turned out you were completely wrong, because the title is selling well over 100,000. <laughs> <laughs> no, the title is selling terribly, actually. Um, and all the buzz is gone, and you were, you were 100% right. So um, uh, how, do you, how do you feel about your uh, victory prediction there? I don't like being right about this. I, I enjoy Brian K. Vaughn's work. Uh, I certainly enjoy it more than uh, any network that's uh, optioned a series from him. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. And, and, yeah, and I, 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 I love Fiona Staple. Yeah, I've gotten to meet both of them. Uh, I was a big fan of Saga out the gate. I've got a Prince Robot, the fourth sketch from, from Fiona. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I also got a commission from her of Dr. Phosphorus. All right. Well, now you're just bragging uh, at this point. Yes, I am just bragging. Okay. That is correct. Okay. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I love that. I love the artwork. I, I love, you know, a lot of what the story was doing and this is going to lead into a lot of the things like we're, we're going to be talking about. I really liked it at the time because at the time when it started coming out, it felt fresh and different. Mm -hmm. I, um, well, and here's a cheap plug right now. If you're curious how, you know, Saga and the sales and everything else, there's a nice sales analysis video by a wonderful, uh, channel, this one, uh, that you can go check out right now. And it would taught you looks at the series and how the trades were selling. And, and Saga was one of those comics that critically acclaimed sold real well. Trades did real well. And overall, it's a big money maker, and it it um, and then it went on, and it was doing the hiatus. It would do a little like an arc, and then it would go on hiatus, and then the hiatus has kind of got a little longer, and then we got this three plus year hiatus. And during that time, uh, we had a pandemic. Of course, you know, since I moved down to Texas, I've learned that there was not a pandemic in Texas. Actually, COVID never existed here, which is this crazy thing. I hear it also didn't exist in Florida. So it's both states just never happened. Anyway, no. so. Uh, you know, comic changes and everything else, it comes back. Um, and what happened? Why Why do you think that it was not able to regain the audience it had? You know, it's... I, I think there's a few reasons. I think, number one, um, the hiatuses and all of that, like being away so long, any new fans you got of the series we're not going to go to comic shops because you could get, you, you know, you could get the trades or whatever at comic shops, but for the most part, it was like, Oh, I can just order it on Amazon or, you know, yeah. Walmart or target or somewhere and have it delivered. Or I could just get the whole compendium of everything or, you know, you're, you, you have an audience that's not used to getting floppies at that point. Right. So why, why would someone who's got the first nine trades or the compendium, by the floppies. Right. So, so you had that. I think there was also a, um, you, you know, you can characterize this better than I can, but I, I think image masterfully misfired with that announcement that there were going to be no more second printings. Yeah. You know, that was, leaning into saga and getting those numbers up. And then they rapidly back backpedaled from no second printings 
because yeah. that was obviously a bad idea that was never going to work. It, it um, yeah, no, that was one of their stupidest moves. That's that's the subject of a whole other conversation we should do at some point about why sure. you know, some of the dumbest things that, that ever had happened. But you hit on something earlier that I think uh, plays into this, which is the the series itself. Um, there were uh, in the time it was away, in the three plus years it was away, several other comics came in both Marvel DC indies, quite a few and actually tried to copy some of its style, both in storytelling yeah. and characters. And what happened was it, it's almost like a whole cycle of stories came out, attempted to do what they did, got a little bit of attention, burned the whole topic out, failed and went away yeah. before saga came back. And when it came back, saga almost felt like it was copying itself yeah. as opposed to continuing its story. Do you think there's truth to that? I, I think there is some truth to that. It no longer felt fresh and original. Yeah. Um, you know, because, yeah, there, there are other people were doing it. Like, people saw there was a vacuum and right. they wanted to fill it. So, you, you know, um, in the years that Saga was not coming out, Image was pretty you know, steadfast in continuing to pump out more sci-fi books. Right. We've also seen just a change in the market. Like it's, we still don't seem to quite know exactly where things are going, but we have seen time and time again in those, at this point, like four years mm -hmm. from when it went on hiatus that star power in name creators is vanishing rapidly. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. I, I so many things have happened. I think it'd be a, it'd be an amazing uh when a couple so the one thing we don't know in fairness is I don't believe we've seen the first trade. It's been solicited now but we haven't seen the first trade of Saga come out since it's returned. Or or well, the, the, the first trade's been out for about a month. But okay. Okay. Here's the thing. It yeah. is a number one bestseller on Amazon for, you know, image comics and graphic novels. As of right now, in the book selling ranks, it's 2,767. So, okay, that's it's a good, good ranking. In, that's not that good. No, it's it's not good. that good. I'm saying it's a good ranking for a graphic novel. Okay. Out. Okay. Okay. That's fair. You know, but. To give you an idea, if we're just looking at image comics right now in the best selling sellers on Amazon, number two is It's Lonely at the Center of the Earth. I genuinely don't know what that is. It's from Zoe uh, Thorogood. It might be very good. Um, but after that, to give you an idea of how things have changed, Number three is the first Invincible Compendium. Number four is the first Walking Dead Compendium. Number oh. five is the second Invincible Compendium. Number <laughs> six is the third. Number seven is the Walking Dead Compendium Volume 4. Number eight is another Walking Dead Compendium. Nine, another Walking Dead Compendium. Uh, ten, uh, Monstrous, uh, Volume 7. Uh, oh. Was it? Eleven's an Ed Brubaker book. Uh, Twelve, Radiant Black. Yeah. Um, 13 Paper Girls, The Complete Story. Um, then you get a Spawn Compendium, another Walking Dead uh, volume, another Walking Dead volume, Ice Cream Man, then Saga Compendium number one. Yeah, so it's it, the, the buzz is gone. You, you know, the, the buzz the, the buzz is gone for where Saga was. Yeah. Um, for anyone else, if you were just putting out an image book now and you were doing that, that's fantastic. Sure. However, Saga, the, the reason, like, you know, more, more casual people who might be listening to this might be like, these couple of jackasses are tearing down the, the <laughs> number one selling <laughs> image book on Amazon. They would never say that about you and me. Yeah. No, no one would ever say that. But, it's all about context and the context when it comes to saga. And we've talked about this before. You've mm -hmm. talked about this in 
many videos. Yeah, because I repeat myself a lot. Yeah, you you do. But yeah. when when talking about Saga, it's like there was a time where the floppies were selling so well mm -hmm. it sold other books. That's right. You know, so maybe uh, go to a little bit of that right now about how stores would talk about like, oh, we would get these Saga customers and then they might pick out other image books, other indie comics, things like that. It was an umbrella title and that it, it, it to, to your point, it sold other books. It sold itself and it had a halo effect around other titles. Um, Saga was, you know, Walking Dead ending, uh, you know, ending. Uh, invincible ending. I think there was this moment where Saga was, without a doubt, Image's bigger biggest book, and it was one of those titles that it kept growing over time. It had a Walking Dead kind of feel to it, where the the it was continuing to grow. The trades were were doing very well. It it was kind of a it, it was their next generation of of leading title, and then the hiatus. So. Now, I guess we, we talked about, so there's a lot of books that kind of tried to copy its style. There was a, you know, the time it was away was longer than it should have been. By a lot. I think they said originally it was going to be a one year hiatus. Yeah. So it, so it, it had a feeling of, it didn't, it didn't come back and people thought, it, it didn't feel to me like people were like, oh my God, I'm glad it's finally back. It almost felt like there was some irritation that was gone as long as it was. Is kind of the, the I vibe I got. That. I was irritated. I wasn't happy. Like, like it, mm -hmm. I wasn't happy with how it was handled. I, I don't think a lot of people were. And the other thing that hurt, and we brought this up with other creators too, like um, mm -hmm. when um, and, and you know, not picking on people, just using these as examples because they're actual examples and there are numbers that back this up. Yeah. But when Matt Fraction and Kelly Sue DeConnick came back and they did books at DC. Mm -hmm. I mean, they hadn't really done a lot at DC or really much at all there. So, so already, you know, it's these new creators doing it. But they didn't have a footprint in comics for years when they came right. back. That's right. They were gone for years, and there was nothing, nothing really big popped from that. Um, you mm -hmm. know, uh, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen uh, got critical acclaim, but it yeah, wasn't like a, yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was. Uh, it was good, but but it didn't it didn't end up with that buzz. It wasn't like when Sex Criminals came out and no one could shut the fuck up about Sex Criminals and still can. Yeah, no, that book that book sucked in my opinion. But anyway, I don't know that. But Hawkeye, yeah. a title I also kind of think sucked. But anyway, um, I think again. it sucked too. I, you know what? That was um, I was meaning to talk to you about that because you had that video about like. Um, What's, what's a comic that everyone loves and you think sucks? And we both agree uh, that Hawkeye. Hawkeye run sucked. I, I agree. I, I don't, I still don't get it uh, to something. I don't get the attention. I, I even comics that I don't particularly love. I can still usually understand why they're as popular as they are, but other than kind of David Aha doing some pretty impressive art, I, I do not get yeah. at all that shit. But anyway, yeah. be that as it may, um, what about, the case so so i think there's one other factor here that might have hurt it and that was a misunderstanding of the attachment the readers had to the characters yeah and right before they went on hiatus they basically revealed they were murdering one of the two main characters the, yeah. the dad basically yeah and i think that was meant to be kind of a fun twist mm -hmm. do you th I, I, people i've talked to were legitimately pissed off at that moment Mm -hmm. And even though the title was kind of narrated by uh, the, the girl, the daughter, um, they still had a, a, that was kind of the favorite character getting killed. Do you think that yeah. also had an impact? Oh, absolutely. I've yet to meet a single person who loves Saga that didn't consider him to be one of, if not their favorite character in the book. Yeah. And um, repeatedly people are like, you know, including myself, it's like Hazel's not a character; she's a narrator. She's yeah. a baby who just exists. So, aging her up, no one like like again. This is all a complete misfire, misunderstanding what what people have grown to like about a book because again, she wasn't a character. 
Right. And now that she's a character and she's here, like, I don't care about this. Like she was, ne- she's not the interesting part at all. Right. Uh, and, and yet now she's kind of like the driving force of the book. She is. Yeah. She is a driving force uh, behind the book. And they're also, um, you know, the promises that they're going to allow us to see her going through puberty. And, and I, I mean, I, I didn't, I don't know that I want to see the narrator go through puberty. I, I don't know why. I don't know who, who does want to see that. No, I don't get it. I, uh, I don't like, but why? I mean, well, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I can't think of anyone. Gerard Jones definitely wouldn't. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, let's see what uh, Cameron Stewart thinks of this. Uh, anyway. <laughs> 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 you got to get her of age so Warren Ellis has it. No, never mind. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's a shame. It's a shame to yeah. see a book. I, I mean, and I think uh, to your to something you said earlier, and and just to make sure, I I I, I do like Fiona Staples quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I like Brian K. Vaughan quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, when I read the comic, I still feel the the you know there's there's good craft to the storytelling. I think they, this, the art is, I mean, it just, I still yeah. feel like I'm getting a book by talented people. I don't think that their mm-hmm. talents have, have degraded any. Oh yeah. No, it doesn't feel like they're phoning it in. It just feels like the direction the story is going in. Isn't lining up with what the audiences w- were looking for as it used to. Like, it feels like it, they got out of touch it's yeah. like it, saga now feels like I, I'm trying to think of how to say it. it's it's like you haven't seen you know if you're like a kid and you hadn't seen like an aunt or uncle or someone in like a few years and yeah. it's like Christmas and they get you like the same kind of like sweater mm-hmm. and you're just like yeah like I mean this was fine when I was like a kid but I'm like 14 now and i don't wear you know these kind of sweaters like school i'll get beaten up like what are you doing yeah. like yeah it's like it feels more like like someone who who's earnest and cares but it's just not lining up anymore yeah it has a steve buscemi hey fellow kids kind of feel to it all of a sudden yeah. like it, it wants to come back and kind of be what it was but it, it the moment has passed and it, you do feel I, I'm left feeling kind of bad for kind of the you know, two creators I do genuinely admire and I think do good oh, work, sure. but it's uh, I kind of wish the series had ended and they'd gone off and done something else. Yeah, it would have been nice to see them doing other stuff, but they they were kind of just like off the table that that whole time too, which was frustrating because it's like I really you know I, I liked getting you know their their work and, and reading it mm-hmm. and. And, and yeah, I think you you get these audiences and, and fans who are kind of like, oh, you, you left comics for a while and you came back and it was just weird. It's like, I, I don't know how. Like, uh, Yeah. And I don't know, like, I don't think anyone could have necessarily anticipated exactly where comics were going to be. Because, um, I mean, when you're in the moment and at that time in the early, mid-2010s, it really did feel like, oh, there's these megastar names. Why would the star ever diminish? Aren't they just always going to be megastars? It's the same mistake, you know, the image founders made in the early night. Like, yep. it's, you see these mistakes made over and over again. Yeah. And, and it's, I guess it must be hard to avoid because it just keeps happening all the time. It does. And it's interesting. I, um, yeah, I mean, in that time, the series was ending and, People were getting ready for that second term of uh, Donald Trump, and Twitter was uh, just going to continue to be a great haven for free speech and democracy. And uh, you know, and and Russia was this kind of wacky little country; it never hurt nobody. And here we are. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, there you go, uh, Joe. Thank you very much. And uh, let's uh, yeah, we'll we'll do a fourth video now, and nobody will just move into that awkward silence again. Sounds good. 